Hello, I'm Andrew, aka Quasi from Quasi Spell Tower, and today I'm going to show you guys how I made an XPS foam wooden crate. But before we go there, yes, the before, um, I got a few things I just want to get off my chest. First of all, okay, the new look, okay, I can't guarantee it's going to stay. That whole COVID 19's got me all a little loopy in the, in the mind, I guess. Uh, the wife has got the spare bedroom because she's working from home. So I'm out here doing my thing in the breezeway. Um, and the video that I'm gonna show you in a bit is actually a video I recorded a while back. Um, not very good with some of the shots. I'll, I'll be doing a voiceover for it anyways. Um, I didn't wanna remake this because I wanna get this video out as quick as I can. So I'm not going there. I'm not sure where I'm going with my channel. I'm not saying I'm getting rid of it or anything else. I don't know how often I'll be making stuff. Um, I do have a few things I want to make, maybe to make uh, your crafting on the Peroxide maybe a little bit easier. I'm not guaranteeing those videos will come out. I'm hoping uh, what I have in my mind up here will come out and work. Um, and I have a few other things for your paint supplies and stuff like that, especially if you're traveling back and forth like I'm doing from the bedroom to the breezeway to the garage, you know, just carrying all the stuff in one thing is just a pain in the butt. But anyways, guys, let's get to the video and please don't comment too much on the beard, okay? Or the new look. <laughs> See you guys in a bit. So to start making this wooden crate out of the XBS foam, um, first, I'm just going to use some scraps. Got to get rid of those scraps. I got way too many of them. But first, we're going to set this up to 7 8 for the length of the wooden crate. And uh, I've learned one thing while doing this, especially with this project or a lot of other projects, is uh, once you cut your length on there, if you're going to be covering up that piece of foam uh, with other foam or other material, definitely write um, what side of that block it is just so you don't make mistakes because I don't show them here in this video But yeah, I did this like two or three times just trying to make this block because I kept making silly mistakes But anyways, we're gonna move on So the width of this is gonna be five eighths and once again, make sure you mark it that that's the width side and then we will Go and set this at three eighths and do the height there so now I'm just taking another piece of scrap foam that I had, which was a thin, long enough piece. I think it was a little longer, a little wider than an inch, but it was perfect. And it was thick enough, even though I will make it thinner. But I'm just using my wire brush to make some wood grain texture. Make sure I'm following the grain of the foam, which if you need to, you might have to do some test piece to understand which way the foam that you have uh, which way the grain's going but I'm gonna go over this a couple times with it and give it a nice texture look of the wood grain and then I will in a second uh, bring out my utility knife and uh, use that and add some more texture to it maybe give it a little bit of wavy lines in it um, and just touch it up make it look good so next, I'm just going to set up my Peroxon, and I'm going to set up to 1 16th inch for the thickness of these wooden beams that we're going to be making. Now, you can, as you can see, you can see me pushing it right against the wall, making sure the grain is against the wall, and I'm just pushing it and trying to go at a steady pace, not too fast, not too slow, but not trying to stop. Just keep going at the same pace. And uh, it should come out just fine. So now I'm just setting up my Peroxon to one inch and I'm going to run this foam piece through because it was wider than an inch and we only need an inch for length of the planks that we'll be making. So next I'm setting up the Peroxon to one eighth of an inch. Cut the width of all the timbers that will be cut. I don't really remember how many I cut. I just cut a bunch of them. And if you have extra, that's awesome because you can use them for another project somewhere in the future if you need to. One thing I do wanna mention while I'm cutting these pieces is you wanna make sure that the temperature on your Peroxon is set at a low temperature. 
Uh, you don't want to melt these and then make them thinner than 1 8 so you just got to find the right temp uh, I, I can't remember what it was it was probably one or lower but it was just a low temp and you just take your time and just run these through uh, make sure you're keeping your board as square as you can uh, while running it through so you don't have some oddball pieces and then it looks like the grain is going at an angle on your uh, foam or whatever else so keep an eye out for that too so now that all the cutting is done now it's time to do the gluing so basically all I'm gonna do is put on some tacky glue from Eileen's and just smooth it out on there put three maybe four boards I think it's three that I put on there and then you can use a pin if you need to to pin them down so they don't move on you uh, or you can wait for them to dry it's your choice um, I just kept moving on with this project I noticed the pieces were moving on me as I was putting this together but that is what I had to deal with so as you can see as I'm putting them on they are longer than the box that we made for the in the beginning uh, because they are an inch and the box is only seven eighth in length but I tried to eyeball them the best I could so there was an even overlap on each side. So as I was putting on this third piece here, uh, you do have a little bit of problem because there's not much of an edge, but you just gotta be patient, glue it on there. Yeah, you see me fumbling around with this, but it'll work out in the long run. You do want it to overlap the block just a little bit because you're gonna be putting uh, boards on the other side and it'll all even out at the end. So after I've got those boards on there the way I like, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the table and push down on it to get the boards on the side even with the bigger block so it's nice and flush. So now I'm just going to add some more tacky glue and smooth it out and place some more boards on there. So as you're placing your boards on there, when you get to the very last one, it may interfere or not quite fit at the very end. You might have to use an X-Acto knife just to trim the board just a little bit so it doesn't bump into the other board and push it off or give it a really weird looking warped look to it. And then you'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and then we'll be on to the next step. So the next step is to do the boards on the ends of the crate. Now they are going to be smaller than an inch. They're going to be 5 eighths in length. So what I'm going to do is basically take a marker, mark them at 5 eighths. I think you need maybe three of them for each side. So about six or eight of them. And then I will go ahead and cut them. And then if they're just a hair too big or whatever else, just trim them a little bit so they'll fit inside the squares and that will be done and out of the way. So now we're just gonna take those pieces we cut and we're gonna add some glue in here, smooth it out, and then just put those boards in. And once again, if for some reason one of them doesn't fit when you get to the very last one, just go ahead and trim it so it will fit in there. Then do the same thing with the other side and then we can move on to the next step. So now we're going to take our extra pieces that we have and we're going to put these crossed on the top of the wooden crate and we will do this on all four sides. Now they're going to be placed about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. So you're just going to take some tacky glue, dot it on there very gently and then go ahead and place them on there. Make sure to cut off the excess on each side so they're flush with each side of the wooden crate. Now I go ahead and poke four to five holes in each of the boards that go across the wooden crate to give it the look that it has been nailed to the boards to hold them together. I do that on all four sides. Then I go in with my X-Acto knife and just add some extra detail and make sure that I've covered everything to give it a wood texture making sure I get to the edges on the end of this just so it looks like wood and not just a flat piece of board. 
So the last step of this project is just go ahead, get some glue and some water, 50-50 mix, and then go ahead and seal it. So here it is, the finished XPS foam wooden crate. Now, I just put some Mod Podge on it with a little bit of water to thin it out, just to seal it. Um, I'm going to make a silicone mold of it and then do some resin cast of this so I don't have to make this over again. And just make copies of it whenever I need them. It's real simple to do. Now, uh, I see where I could have added some more detail and everything else, but I'm happy with it. And maybe I'll make another one and add the detail on it. But until then, guys, that's it. So before I go, I noticed that my channel has been slowly growing. And that might be because everybody's got to stay home. And, you know, you got to do something on YouTube. And I'm sure there's a lot of crafters out there that are looking for inspiration. Maybe you found my channel and subscribed. I want to say Thank you for subscribing. Uh, I hope you guys don't disappear on me anytime soon. Um, I'm hoping to keep uh, making some crafts and everything else. Um, we'll see where the future goes. Um, I still will be doing my RPG crate um, reviews uh, for the box openings. I don't know how long I'm going to do those for. I might end them when the season's over in August. Unless I get some reactions of people saying don't get rid of it because I just feel like um, they're not doing well that, and it's also messing with my al algorithm with the channel a bit because it's kind of like, you know, crafting and then box reviews. So it's kind of having a hard time knowing, you know, where they should be going with uh, putting them out on YouTube world or whatever else. Um, but let me know if you guys want me to keep that going. Um, I don't mind. Uh, one of the things I do want to do, though, on those is actually um, possibly get a hold of some people. Maybe do some Roll20 and actually start playing those adventures out. Maybe even building some terrain for it. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, let me know what you guys think and uh, what you would like me to do. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. And remember, ring that like button like a hunchback. Until next time, guys. Hello, everybody. It's me. It's me, Mario. Hello, everybody. It's me, Andrew. Hey,